Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Greg with TheBetterOfficial.com, and it's time to look at plays. Stick around. Hello again, it's Greg with abetterofficial.com where we craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. Welcome to another edition of Five Play Fridays where we look at plays and see what we can take from them so that we can get better as basketball officials. Five Play Fridays is a weekly series with new videos releasing every Friday during the basketball season. Make sure to hit subscribe and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Hey, a quick shout out this week to Tony Burt and Jason Hayes for buying us a coffee this week. Very generous and much appreciated. It really helps us stay caffeinated and producing content for you. Thank you. You can always buy us a coffee at abetterofficial.com slash coffee. Now let's look at plays. Today we're going to focus on two of the NFHS points of emphasis for 2018. We'll start with two plays that involve traveling and then two plays that involve block charge and guarding. But stick around for play number five as I guarantee it will be a challenge for you as a basketball official. Let's get started. As we recall from the points of emphasis video for 2018, NFHS says not that there's too much traveling being called, not that there's too little traveling being called, but rather the accuracy of traveling calls needs improvement, and the way to improve our accuracy is to identify the pivot foot, right? That's our first step in judging accuracy of traveling calls. All right, this is the step back play that uh, popularized by James Harden in the NBA, among others, but also something that is definitely being taught to kids today. So it's something we have to learn to officiate. Player terminates his dribble right here with a red foot pivot foot, uses the right foot to push his body away from the defender, creates space for an open shot which is all well and good. Problem is, he comes with a staggered landing, landing one foot, two foot. And by rule, that's a traveling violation. What he's trying to do is execute the move from our points of emphasis video. Jumps off the one foot, holding the ball, but lands with two feet simultaneously. That's the key. That's a legal play. And that's what these players with the step back move are trying to accomplish. We just have to judge as officials whether they achieve it successfully or not. So just to reiterate, jump off of one foot, land on two feet simultaneously is a legal play. Jump off one foot, land with a staggered landing with two feet is an illegal play. When small, quick players execute this move, sometimes it can be a challenge for us to sort out in our brain which foot was the pivot foot. Things happen very quickly. In this instance, we've got a larger, more lumbering player, which makes things a lot more evident. Let's find the pivot foot. That's our objective right here. So we got a left foot pivot, steps forward with the left foot, gathers the ball, holds the ball, spins, places the right foot on the floor, as well as the left foot back onto the floor. This is a traveling violation. Left foot, left foot returns, traveling. So again, our point of emphasis from NFHS is more accurate travel rulings. And to achieve that accuracy, let's focus on finding the pivot foot and knowing the rules and restrictions.
Let's look at the merits of the play. Defender, two feet on the floor, facing his opponent. Torso contact, charge. Okay, one of our fundamental principles on a transition play is to be always ball aware. We know what's going on with the ball, but also what's going on with our crew, right? Has there been a rotation that we missed, etc.? On this play, if you're the center, you need to be aware that your lead official is not in a great position. For whatever reason, he's not in a great position. I have that awareness. That's a foul. Secondary cadence, come in, put a whistle on the play. Designate the spot, move to the reporting area, and off we go. Transition play, all defenders are secondary defenders, okay? Basically these two. Either play involving these, these two defenders belongs to the lead. Lead has first crack. The lead is out of position, or that's a play that needs a whistle. Secondary cadence from an official whose the play is in their secondary. We are in a fast break situation. All defenders are secondary defenders. These two defenders here are secondary defenders. Lead has first crack on secondary defenders. We have a charge. Let's talk about the legality of the player. Prior to going airborne, both feet on the floor, facing his opponent, easy charge. This defender is legal. Charge. Now we have players on the floor and we have players coming in to assist. Okay? Do not run away from these plays. We are in no rush. We know we have a charge on white 32 and we know where we're going to go. Let's just make sure everybody's in great shape. Yes, players are good. NFHS mechanics lead when they make the call as the lead is going to switch with the table side official. If the lead had properly designated the spot as over here on the O, he would become the new lead table side. Fails to do so on this play, though. Move to the reporting area, report, and off we go. It's important to recognize whose defender this is. This is a secondary defender on a fast break situation, belongs to the lead. Now, the lead's not in perfect position here, but easy, easy call. Okay? If the lead does not have a call, who can get it? Center can get it. Trail can get it. Now we got players on the floor. We also have two officials moving. Official one and official two, both moving. That means your third official has to observe the players. Before we look at play number five, it's important to remember that Blue 55 and white 34 had been an issue for us the entire game. White 34 and blue 55 have been our trouble players. last foul on blue was their seventh team foul.
we have as, as a crew have to figure out whether this is a correctable error, and if it is, how we'll proceed. That's the challenge for you right now is to say, okay, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to answer these questions. Did this occur in the correctable time frame? How will we resume? The challenges we face in correctable error situations is we have to rewind the game in our mind and piece things together as a crew. What happened? Can we fix it? How will we proceed? In this instance, what we need to do is realize we erroneously awarded the white team a throw-in when they should have shot merited free throws. This is when our period starts. We have until the ball becomes live again to correct the error. We have a foul and the ball becomes dead. So at this point, we are informed by the table that the last team foul was the seventh. And since the ball has yet to become live, since we made the error, it is within the correctable error time frame. The next thing we need to determine is, has there been a change of possession? Recall that we gave the ball to white for a throw-in. Since that time, has blue had possession of the ball? And the answer is obviously yes. Okay, since they took the rebound and went the length of the floor and shot and scored a goal. We know that when we award the merited free throws, which we'll do in this correctable error situation, it will be with the lane cleared. We're not going to resume the game with the free throws since we've had that change of possession. Okay, We're going to resume the game back here with blue shooting the free throw that they are merited here. But before we do that, we're going to correct our error by awarding the merited free throws for white at the other end. Okay? Basics? Good. Now, who shoots the one and one? Our player who was fouled is white 13. White 13 is going to shoot the free throws. Except, white 13 is now subbed out of the ballgame. Now we're informed. So, you could make a case, hey, even though he's been subbed out, and cannot play until the clock runs you could say okay well this time frame is such that we're going to bring white 13 back and he's going to shoot the free throws but what if prior to the original throw in white 13 had been substituted for then who's going to shoot the free throws something to think about so our takeaway on the correctable error play is first of all we're concentrating on the game itself we have players in the game who we are keeping an eye on. We have situations. We're aware of the calls our partners have. We're working as a crew. We're very occupied with the game. And then suddenly we're presented with a correctable error situation. And it's not always easy for us to just say, oh, here's what happened. Let's do this, 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 this. It may be a situation where we have to replay Let's say originally blue, uh, white misses the shot, blue comes down, misses a shot, comes down to the other end, white misses a shot, etc. It goes down back and forth for three or four times. We have to, in our minds, as a crew, reconstruct what has happened to determine if there's a correctable error time frame that we can correct this error and how we'll proceed. It's not easy. Yeah, but it is something we have to be prepared to do because it happens at all levels of basketball. In the NBA, they have correctable error situations. In the NCAA, they have correctable error situations. And in high school, they have correctable error situations. And just saying, well, I'm not going to let it happen in my game, in a lot of ways is a cop-out thinking, well, I don't need to think through how to actually solve the problem because I'm going to prevent the problem. Any way you slice it, the problem will arise, and we need to learn how to officiate these plays. Hey, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. I'm getting to the end of the video. Much appreciated. We do have additional videos available. Check those out. But if you do me a favor right now and just like this video, if you felt it provided value to you, if you want to share it to your association, your group, that's much appreciated so we can all get better together here at abetterofficial.com. Take care.